Welcome back, my friends, to what could be the most amazing day of my life. Okay, okay, I am really excited for what's about to happen, but I have to stay calm. No matter how cool what's about to happen to me is, I have to stay calm and explain a couple of things before the awesomeness actually happens. Uh, uh, uh. We are talking about conviction. Conviction is just a fancy word that means standing for what is right even when others don't. And that's what superheroes do. They stand for what is right. Superheroes are awesome. And today I think I've figured out how to become a real superhero with real superpowers. You heard that right. A real superhero. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're wondering how I'm going to pull off something so awesome. Well, I'll tell you. I have been researching different superheroes, trying to figure out how they got their powers, and I came across one hero that was injected with a super serum. It gave him all kinds of cool abilities. Now, I'm going to be honest. I'm not quite sure what a serum is, but it sounds a lot like syrup. So I'm going to go ahead and guess that they are the same thing. Sounds good, right? Right. Take a look at this. Behold, every type of syrup that was available at my local grocery store. I've got chocolate syrup, strawberry syrup, maple syrup, of course, some heavy corn syrup, even a little light corn syrup, and even though I hate the taste, I'll add a dash of cough syrup, because I'm thinking you can't have too many syrups when you're trying to become a superhero. Yes, with so many syrups, I'm bound to give myself some kind of superpower, and now to mix them all together. Yes! Finally, I have the key to becoming a superhero right here. My very own superhero syrup serum. No more normal me. Time to be super me. <sniffs> Woo! That, that's, that is syrupy. And, and very, very ugh, sweet. <sniffs> that cough syrup flavor really overpowers the others. <clears throat> I don't really feel anything yet. <sniffs> Wait, I think I'm starting to feel something. Yes, I definitely feel like something's starting to kick in. I suddenly feel like I have more energy. Yes, energy, that's it. I have the energy to run around and shout and stay up really late. Woohoo! Superhero serum serum, yeah! Hey, it's... Miss Jan. Hi, Miss Jan. Notice anything different about me? Do you? Do you? Huh? Do you? Yes, I do. And you've got a lot of sugar in your system. And now you're... I've got superpowers. This superhero syrup gave me superpowers. Woohoo! Yeah, I don't think that's good for you. How about... Hey, why are you talking so slow, slowpoke? Bet you can't handle my super speed. Super syrup serum. Oh, I think you're super enough right now. How about you keep running for just a little bit so you can work that sugar out of your system? I don't know what you're talking about. I'm super. Sure you are. And soon I'm going to need you and your superpower to help me tell today's Bible story. Do you think you can slow down long enough to help me? Yes, yeah, superheroes are always happy to help. Woo How are you feeling? I already told you I feel super and confused. Why am I holding good and bad sides? That's something you'll need for today's Bible story. Is it a good story or a bad story? Well, that's what, tr what we're trying to figure out. There are some good things that happen and some bad things that happen, and there are some bad things that seem good and some good things that seem bad. That doesn't make any sense. Well, hopefully, with your help, it'll all come together. As I tell the story, you can help us all keep track of when something is good happens and when something bad happens. If it sounds good, show us the good sign. Try it out. Whoa, that was awesome! And if I describe something in the story that sounds bad, hold up the bad sign. Wow, that is sad. Let's try good again. 
much better. I think you've got it. Today's story is from the Old Testament book of Daniel, and it starts in chapter 1. There was a very powerful king named King Nebuchadnezzar, and he... Why did you give the bad sign? His name is Nebuchadnezzar. That's an awful name. He probably got made fun of, so I gave the frown. Hmm. Yeah, I guess that sort of makes sense. But they probably didn't make fun of him because he was a very powerful king with a mighty army. Right. Well, he used that army to conquer the people of Israel. The cities were destroyed and many of the people, including Daniel and his friends, were taken away as prisoners. Wow, it sounds like Daniel was having a rough time. Yeah, at first, but his story is just beginning. King Nebuchadnezzar gave an order for the best and brightest of the young men who had been captured to be trained to serve him in the royal palace. Daniel and his friends were some of the young men who were picked. He went from being a prisoner to being trained to work for the king of the palace? Sweet deal. And that's not all. The special training to work for the king would take three years. And during those three years, Daniel and his friends would be given the same food that was served to the king. They got special training for cool jobs and they got delicious food for the king too? Daniel and his friends must have been thrilled. Well, it seemed good at first, but there was a problem with the food. What's the problem? It's from the king. Was it too delicious or something? No, the problem was that Daniel and his friends were Israelites, and God had given them some very specific rules about what they could and could not eat. Eating the food from the king's table wouldn't be right because it would break the rules that God had given to them. Oh, that's tough. Daniel had a decision to make. He could just sit back and eat the food, be trained, and get his sweet job working for the king, or he could speak up about the food and risk getting in trouble and losing everything. What did he do? Daniel had conviction. Daniel knew that God wanted him to honor God with what he ate. So Daniel decided to speak up. He asked for permission that he and his friends not eat the food that came from the king's palace. Way to go, Daniel! Well, the first person Daniel asked, the official who was in charge of Daniel and his friends, didn't like the idea. Because if Daniel and his friends didn't eat the king's food and they got too sick, skinny or sick, then the official would be the one who got into trouble with the king. I can see how that would be bad. But Daniel came up with a plan. Oh, that's good. This time, Daniel asked the guard who was assigned to him and his friends. He asked the guard to try a test. This was the test. For 10 days, Daniel and his friends would eat different food eaten by the rest of the men being trained. And when the 10 days were over, the guard could decide which men were in better shape. That's a brilliant plan. What was the food Daniel and his friends would eat instead? Vegetables and water. It's bad. Wait, wait, no, it wasn't bad. Let's recap. The plan was to eat just vegetables. Yes. And drink only water. Yes. For 10 days. Yes, and at the end of... Stop that. It wasn't bad. Daniel knew it was important to follow God even when it came to things like what he ate. The guard agreed to the plan and Daniel and his friends ate just vegetables and drank water for 10 days. And they were miserable, right? Actually, no. The Bible says that when the 10 days were over, Daniel and his friends looked healthier and better nourished than the other men who had eaten the king's food. Really? Wow. I guess it was a good plan. Yes, the plan worked so well that the guard gave Daniel and his friends only vegetables and water to eat and drink for the rest of the three years of their training. More vegetables and water? Not so fast. Before you raise that sign, you need to hear what happened next. God gave Daniel and his friends some special understanding and wisdom during their training. And when their men had been... And when their training was finished, the king was more impressed with Daniel and his friends than any of the other men who had been trained. And they were all given jobs in the royal service where they advised the king when he needed their help. Wow! Yes, Daniel stood up for what was right. It wasn't easy, and he risked a lot. But because he stood up for what was right, things turned out better for him and his friends. <laughs> What was that for? Nothing bad happened. 
No, that wasn't for the story or for Daniel. He did great. The frowny sign was for me. I don't know what's happening, but I don't feel very super anymore. I think I need more of my superhero syrup. Whoa, I think you're starting to experience a sugar crash. No more syrup for you. Maybe you should drink some water and maybe eat some vegetables for a little bit until you feel a little better. My superhero syrup works. Just check out my <sighs> super speed. Sure thing. Where was I? Oh yes, Daniel was able to have conviction because he knew what God said about what was right and wrong. And that's exactly like our bottom line for today. When you know what God says, it can help you stand for what's right. Like Daniel, we can know what God says is right and wrong. We do that by reading our Bibles and remembering what it says. That way, when you're in a situation where you aren't sure about the right thing to do, you're not sure what is the wise choice, you can think back to what you've learned from the Bible. Then you'll know the right thing to do and you'll be able to stand for what is right. Let's pray. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for giving us the Bible so we can know how to live the way you want us to. Help us to have the same courage that Daniel had. Help us to stand for what's right. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Now take a few moments to talk about these questions with whoever is watching with you today. I hope you enjoyed this week's lesson and look forward to seeing you soon. Have a great week.